Recently, the Jiangxi Cultural Department in China has abolished the ranks and bank accounts of retired troop members, effectively revoking their civil servant status and benefits. As a result, their pensions have significantly decreased and they no longer receive any other benefits typically enjoyed by civil servants. In response, numerous retired personnel have gathered in protest outside the Jiangxi government offices. Some held white placards inscribed with red characters displaying the names of their respective troops, including Beijing Opera, acrobatics, drama and puppet troops. The demonstrators stood or sat in silent protests. Despite the peaceful nature of the protests, the Chinese authorities dispatched law enforcement and broadcast warnings for the crowd to disperse or face potential arrest. The reasons behind these cutbacks are simple. The local economy has declined over the three years of the pandemic, with increased government spending and decreased revenues. The local governments are running out of money. The measures taken by the Jiangxi government to suspend civil servant pensions and cut down on staffing underscore the severity of the fiscal crisis local governments face. Moreover, the unfolding financial crisis portends the challenges facing the overall Chinese economy. Currently, most provinces in China are mired in debt, with fiscal revenues experiencing negative growth. Official Chinese data shows that as of November 2022, the balance of local government debt was 35 trillion RMB, approximately 4.91 trillion USD. The balance of the central government's domestic and foreign debt accumulated to 23.3 trillion RMB, about 3.27 trillion USD by the end of 2021. Hence, the national outstanding debt balance amounted to 58.3 trillion RMB, about 8.18 trillion USD. To clarify, the balance of debt is the total liability minus the repaid portion. Chinese local governments often engage in a financial game of borrowing new debt to pay off old debts. Furthermore, these figures only account for explicit debts and do not include implicit debts borrowed by local government financing platforms, which would significantly increase the debt total. Local government financing platforms play a crucial role in financing infrastructure projects in China, acting as a vital engine of economic growth. However, these platforms have also become a black hole in China's financial system, used to bridge the gap between local government revenues and expenditures. As reported by Bloomberg, research by Rhodium Group, a US think tank on 205 Chinese cities and 2,892 local government financing platforms, revealed that in 2022, government debt repayment costs exceeded 10% or more of the total fiscal revenue in half of the cities indicating difficulties faced by local governments in debt repayment. In contrast, only a third of cities faced such difficulties in 2021. Researchers believe that when the proportion of debt obligation in total income reaches such high levels, it clearly crosses the threshold into territory where managing debt repayment becomes challenging. Investment bank Goldman Sachs estimates that, including official government loans, local government financing platforms, and policy bank-held debts, China's local debt totals approximately 23 trillion USD, equivalent to 126% of its GDP. According to statistics from mainland Chinese media, as of the end of 2022, the debt ratio in each province in China is on the rise. The most notable increases have been seen in Heilongjiang, Xinjiang, Tianjin and Guizhou, where the debt ratio has all exceeded 400%. The growing debt burden has left local governments unable to repay their obligations. In a previous video, we mentioned the city of Hegang in Heilongjiang province, where you could buy a house for tens of thousands of RMB. A little over a year ago, Hegang became the first prefectural level city in China to undergo fiscal restructuring, with its debts amounting to more than twice its fiscal income. Locals have felt the impact of fiscal tightening deeply, with insufficient heating in the bitter winter, taxi drivers facing more traffic fines, public school teachers fearing layoffs, and sanitation workers left with two months of unpaid wages. Hegang is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to China's local government debt issues. According to comprehensive reports from mainland Chinese media, there are currently seven cities in China 
with a fiscal self-sufficiency rate lower than 50%. Besides Harbin in Heilongjiang province, these include Xining in Qinghai province with 40.5%, Changchun in Jilin province with 40.6%, Chongqing in Sichuan province with 42.8%, Nanning in Guangxi province with 45.4%, Yingchuan in Ningxia province with 45.5%, and Hoho in Inner Mongolia with 49.8%. Among China's 35 major cities, only Hangzhou in Zhejiang province has a fiscal self-sufficiency rate over 100%. Cities where the fiscal deficit exceeds 100 billion RMB are also on the rise. These include Chongqing in Xichuan with 279.9 billion RMB, about 40.3 billion USD. Beijing with 129.2 billion RMB, about 18.6 billion USD. Tianjin with 122.8 billion RMB, about 17.7 billion USD. Guangzhou with 119.2 billion RMB, about 17.2 billion USD. Wuhan in Hubei with 117.7 billion RMB, about 16.9 billion USD. And Shanghai with 105.6 billion RMB, about 15.2 billion USD. On April 11th, the Guizhou Provincial Government Development Research Center issued a statement on its website noting that the Centre's Fiscal and Financial Research Department recently visited the cities of Guiyang, Junyi, Bijie and Liu Pansui. It found that debt has become a significant and urgent issue for local governments. However, due to the limited fiscal capacity, efforts to address the debt have proven extremely challenging. Relying on their own ability has not led to effective solutions, and they will now seek intellectual support from the State Council Development Research Centre, proposing feasible suggestions to alleviate Guizhou's local debt. This move is akin to appealing to Premier Li Qiang of the State Council in hopes of receiving central support and financial aid. According to statistics from the Guizhou Provincial Department of Finance, as of the end of 2022, Guizhou's debt balance was nearly 1.25 trillion RMB, about 1.4 billion USD, and this figure does not even include hidden debts. A domino effect is evident in China's local debt crisis. Following Guizhou's public plea for help from the central government, numerous counties and cities in Yunnan province have also begun to voice their financial struggles. Data from Wind shows that in 2022, Yongping County in Yunnan had a debt ratio of 40.6%, a fiscal self-sufficiency rate of 15.7%, and the county's debt was a staggering 991% of its fiscal revenue. According to the Yunnan Provincial 2022 Local Fiscal Budget Execution, Yongping County's local government debt balance was 3.4 billion RMB, about 483 million USD, including general debt balance of 620 million RMB, about 87 million USD, and special debt balance of 2.8 billion RMB at 396 million USD. Recently, meeting minutes discussing the debt of two urban investment companies in Kunming, Yunnan province were leaked revealing that the local special bonds previously issued by Kunming have mostly been diverted to debt repayment. Furthermore, the Kunming government is even considering diverting the public social security funds and housing provident funds for debt repayment. Additionally, several major urban investment companies under the Yunnan government have not paid salaries for months, highlighting the astonishing state of the government's finances. Wuhan in Hubei province has similarly fallen into a debt trap. Recently, in an unprecedented move, the Wuhan Bureau of Finance published a notice requesting 259 companies and units to repay the debts, which have been outstanding since the end of 2018. This action surprised many observers. Among the 259 companies and units, the lowest debt owed was just over 10,000 RMB, about 1,447 USD, while the highest was by Wuhan Dongfeng Light Motor Vehicle Company, which owed a principal debt of 23.54 million RMB, about 3.41 million USD.
The total debt owed by these entities reached 300 million RMB, about 434.2 million USD. Surprisingly, in addition to corporate debt, several district fiscal bureaus under the Wuhan Finance Bureau have also ended up on the list of debt defaulters, including five district fiscal bureaus such as the Hanan District Fiscal Bureau of Wuhan. The Jiangsha District Fiscal Bureau has the highest debt, with a total amount of 12.5 million RMB, about 1.8 million USD. Furthermore, the local governments of the three provinces in northeast China have high debt ratios, population decline, and face economic development difficulties. Information from 2022 shows that by the end of that year, the balances of local government debts in Liaoning, Jiling, and Heilongjiang provinces were 1.98 trillion, 716.8 billion, 729.1 billion RMB respectively, ranking 14th, 24th and 25th nationally. Due to the limited GDP scale of the three northeastern provinces, the debt ratios of the local governments of Liaoning, Jiling and Heilongjiang reached 37.9%, 54.8% and 45.9% respectively, ranking high nationally at 12th, 3rd and 7th places respectively. The finances of Jiling and Heilongjiang are highly dependent on central subsidies and the contribution of Liaoning to the central finance is basically offset by the central subsidy it receives. Ho Zesong, a China economic expert at the American think tank Marco Polo, says many cities will become like Hegang of Heilongjiang province in a few years. The central government might be able to maintain short-term stability by asking banks to extend the terms on local government debts. If no extensions are provided, the reality is that nearly 70% of local governments will not be able to repay the debts on time. The zero-COVID policy of the past three years has strained local finances. China's local government annual budget report shows that in 2022 alone, Chinese provinces spent at least 352 billion RMB, about 50.69 billion USD, on epidemic prevention and control. Land transfer income is a crucial fiscal revenue for local governments. However, the Chinese government's crackdown on real estate development in recent years, declining asset prices and the continuous downturn in the real estate market have led to a decrease in tax revenue and land sale income, intensifying the debt repayment pressure on local governments. The cost of debt repayment in some cities such as Nanjiao in Gansu province and Guiling in Guangxi province, exceeded the total fiscal revenue of these places last year. Local governments saddled with towering debts will inevitably have to cut expenditure or divert funds from growth-promoting projects to continue repaying the debts. Currently, parking lot or parking space franchising rights have become hot-selling products for local governments in central and western China. According to data quoted by the Economic Observer, from January to May last year, a total of 11 local governments sold the operating rights of parking spaces, and this number has nearly quadrupled to around 40 in the same period this year. Local governments soliciting bids for parking space franchise rights are primarily concentrated in the central and western regions such as Guizhou, Yunnan, Xiangxi, Hunan, Gangshu, Xichuan and Hebei, mainly at the county and district level. A person engaged in government investment and financing pointed out that if local governments do not transfer the operating rights of parking spaces, they can only collect parking fees year by year. After the transfer, they can collect 25 or 30 years of operating income at one time. It was revealed that many places are currently facing pressures to maintain basic livelihoods salaries and operations. There is an urgent need to activate existing assets to alleviate financial pressure, and parking space assets are relatively easy to obtain and transfer. In addition to transferring parking space operating rights, universities in China are also raising tuition fees across the board. Some schools were forced to increase tuition for the first time in 20 years, and some even raised their tuition by more than 50%. Most colleges and universities in China are publicly funded, 
and their expenses have always been primarily covered by fiscal appropriations from governments at all levels, from central to local, with tuition revenue playing a supplementary role. However, with local governments mired in a debt crisis, they are unable to fund the operation of universities. According to a report by Reuters, East China University of Science and Technology, located in Shanghai, increased their annual tuition for incoming science and engineering students by 54%, reaching 7,700 RMB, approximately 1,082 USD, while their annual tuition for incoming art students were raised by 30%. In southwest Sichuan province, where population density is quite high, and in northeast Jilin province, Various universities and departments have also increased tuition. The highest increase in tuition fees among universities in Xichuan province is 41%. Reports suggest that many local governments in China currently lack even the capacity to pay interest on their debts, naturally resulting in cutbacks in financial support for universities. Consequently, universities have no choice but to raise tuition fees to increase revenue and ensure normal operations. In his YouTube channel, Jason's Perspective, commentator Dr. Jason stated that the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, addresses the fiscal imbalance in various regions through so-called transfer payments. This involves transferring surplus revenue from wealthy provinces to financially strained, poorer provinces, thereby creating a dependency and attachment of most regions on the central finances of the CCP. Jason indicated that the prerequisite for maintaining this dynamic balance is having provinces with a revenue surplus each year. However, over the past two years, this dynamic equilibrium has collapsed. The debt of all 31 provincial regions in the country has entered an irreversible deepening downturn, and the CCP has no solutions to address these local fiscal problems. Jason pointed out two primary reasons why the central government of the CCP has been forced to fully lie flat on the issue of local debt. One is that the central government is indeed out of money. The other is that the central government is aware that such local debt crises are widespread. If a president is set in one place, all regions across the country will immediately follow suit, using financial shocks to threaten the central government into providing financial aid.